joining us now from on board the cruiser, Tennessee defensive lineman Latroy Lewis. All right, Latroy, here comes Missouri. But wait, Florida kicks off at LSU a couple hours earlier. How tempted are you guys going to be to know what's going on in that game? Everyone, every all the fans are going to be trying to tell you if if, yeah. uh, if it's going your way. Yeah, I mean, of course we. Uh, it would be nice for us to be able to see and watch that game, but you know that's that's out of our control. And what we can control is playing Missouri at 3:30 and um, getting that win. Because regardless of what happens in that LSU Florida game, um, it means nothing if we don't handle our biz our business. Latroy, you didn't control anything in terms of stopping Kentucky from running the ball last week. Nothing more de demoralizing than giving up chunks of rushing yards, 400 and some yards last weekend. Have you guys discussed that and how do you stop Missouri's rush game? Oh, absolutely. That's the first thing we got in Monday. We got to the drawing boards and we looked each other in the eye in the defensive room and, and we said it's, un it's unacceptable from uh, the front end all the way to the back and, and we told ourselves we were going to fix it. We were going to correct it and we were opening that, uh, that meeting on Monday and made the corrections throughout the week and hope to uh, showcase what, what we've corrected and how we're going to move forward playing against the run this week against Missouri. Yeah, Latroy, one of your line mates, Derek Barnett, has 30 career sacks, which is just too shy from the school record set by a former teammate of mine, Reggie White. What does he bring to the table and what have you learned from him about the defensive line position? Oh man, with well, Derek, you, I, I literally could look back and, and just marvel at him work. Uh, the, the way this kid works, uh, probably, not probably, hands down one of the hardest workers on our team. And um, him being two sacks shy, uh, myself, Corey Vereen, uh, every defensive lineman in our room, we're, we're all pushing a little extra to uh, do our part to make sure we can alleviate some of the pressure on him so he can he can go make plays and he can break the record. But being around Derek, um, Grade A guy, grade A football player, grade A friend, um, great leader. Just him having him on the field and his uh, his his passion for the game and his leadership on the field is, is tremendous and uh, helps us a lot. But Troy, seasons are often called journeys. We go back and we look at uh, how we got to where we are. The Tennessee journey has been anything but ordinary. You guys won your first five, but there were comebacks. They came from way behind to beat Florida, the Hail Mary to beat Georgia, a near comeback against uh, Texas A&M. Then you got beat up by Alabama. You have this tough loss against South Carolina. You got the whole schedule. I have got the whole <laughs> schedule. And then Jalen Hurd leaves. How have you guys stuck together through all of that? Like you said, football being a journey, I like to view it as life. And you go through life, you have highs, you have lows, um, you have difficult moments, but it's all about persevering and being resilient. And if I could pick one word to describe our team this year, it would be resilient. Um, we battled through some tough games, some tough breaks. Um, we've had some tough injuries and players leave, and we found a way to stick together as a team. And we still have something to play for in November, and, and we know that. And that's always on our minds when we when we prepare and when we play and every time we step on the field. Latroy, you're a d defensive end. You guys have had so much attrition on that side of the ball. You've had to slide inside and play some defensive tackle. Uh, what has equipped you to help make you successful with that move? Our coach, uh, Coach Steve Stripling, our defensive line coach, has been incredible. I guess from the, from the moment he stepped on campus, he always told us, you know, whether he is coaching Kendall Vickers, Shai Tuttle, Khalil McKenzie, whoever it is, D-Tackle, or if it's an end, that he was coaching everybody in the room because we never knew if we needed it. an end to step in and play tackle or a tackle to play in. So he always talked about cross-training and that uh, whatever, everything, every technique we had and everything we did, it, it correlated and translated from end to tackle. And I listened to him, and I, I took those things and stored them back in my head. And, you know, believe it or not, I'm at a point where I have to use them. And it served me well last week having to slide inside. Yeah, it sure did. You had seven tackles, a sack, and a key fumble recovery late in that game to really help seal the win. I know you're just giving credit out, but how much of a challenge was that to suddenly be lined up a tackle and facing new kinds of blocks and double teams? It was difficult because you think as a defensive end, it's almost like a linebacker. At, at most times in the game, you usually have a shoulder free. Inside, uh, it's, it's a fight in the phone booth. I know it's cliche, but it literally is a fight in the phone booth. And... I tip my hat out to every defensive tackle in the country because it's difficult. Um, <laughs> it's taxing on the body, and it's really a man's game inside. Well, Latroy Lewis, we wish you good luck against Missouri. Thank you for uh, crawling into our glorified phone booth there in the uh, in the cruiser, and good luck Saturday.